Greetings again, everybody. Welcome back to Dark Souls. All that's left now is to fuel the Lord Vessel using the souls of Nito, the Four Kings, the Witch of Isolith, and of course, Seath the Scaleless. Uh, what an ominous door that is. Seems like there's only one way to go now. Hmm. Those appear to be spirits of black knights. One fan theory states, or rather, it's it's fairly likely actually that all the black knights we've been fighting so far weren't actually black knights they were just animated suits of armor but all that doesn't matter I guess I really love the visual design of this area Back in the day, Gwyn and his fellows had it pretty good. Age of Gods and all that. But as the interest in the map that I mention so often, and a few characters within the game as well have also stated, eventually the flames will fade, and only dark will remain. Well, the flame was fading, and Gwyn was afraid that eventually darkness would take over. So, he went out to rekindle the first flame and prolong the age of gods and prevent the darkness from spreading and with it prevent the age of man from happening and this is the scene of that rekindling of the first flame ashes everywhere molten rock it's quite a a lovely scene On his rekindling venture, Gwyn took with him, of course, the Black Knights, which were his closest knights. Uh, those Black Knights here, by the way, they do respawn, so if you wish to farm their weapons and the Titan Knight, go on ahead and do that. But yeah, opposed to what many people seem to think, the Black Knights didn't get scorched black by rekindling the first flame. Uh, that actually happened when they fought the Chaos Demons and got burned in the process of fighting them. But aside from the fact that that happened, we don't really know much about those events. So they might have actually happened kind of at the same time. Time end of the game is really unclear. Uh, this is a fact we've been made aware of ever since the first time we talked to Solaire. Now, about Gwyn's firstborn son. There's quite a bit of speculation surrounding him. The basic story of his uh, person is that he was a god of war. Well loved by many, apparently, he was fairly popular, but he did something and Gwyn didn't like him anymore and disowned him, so to speak. So, Gwyn's firstborn son lost his status as a deity and became human, basically. And a lot of people are of the opinion that Solaire, which we could summon here if we wished, is actually the firstborn son. Solaire talks of the son as a magnificent father, and he's also kind of like a god of war, leading the Sunlight Warriors and engaging in jolly cooperation. And there are some other hints that point in that direction. Uh, but nothing is clear, nothing flat out states, yep, this is the son of Gwyn, the god of war. Personally, I kind of like the idea that Solaire is just crazy. Originally, by the way, Andre of Astor was supposed to be Gwyn's firstborn son, but they changed that fairly late in development. So if Solaire really is supposed to be the firstborn son after all, 
Uh, that probably was put into the game as a last thought. Uh, meanwhile, Gwendolyn was kind of working behind the scenes trying to uh, get people to actually uh, rekindle the first flame again to prolong the Age of Gods being the only deity that was left that would have benefited him greatly. Or maybe he had a different agenda but honestly as with many things in Dark Souls we can't really tell. But all that nice lore aside I'm afraid that now it is time to fight the final boss. Are you ready?
Good stuff. I just love that music. Uh, but yeah, we now have a choice. We can light this here bonfire and rekindle the first flame. But what would actually happen if we did that? You know what? Let's just have a look. Being burnt alive and possibly becoming the new queen doesn't really strike me as that good of an idea. So, I said we have a choice. We can link the fire or we can just leave. I simply love this game. I I played it a lot for this LP. In fact, I played through it almost three times just to get the footage I needed. And in total, it was about 120 hours I played this game. A lot of hours, that is. But yeah, even though I played it that much, I think I'll be coming back for more eventually. For now though, I shall take a small break. A Dark Souls has certainly earned its spot in my heart. Because it is one of the very few games I keep coming back to over and over. I think part of what makes it so appealing to me is its rather simple combat system. I mean, it's fairly basic, but in that simplicity also lies a great depth. And this is by no means a new idea I'm throwing out there though. Another thing that really intrigues me is the lore of the game. And I hope I did a good job of explaining it, though there are still a lot of loose ends and unanswered questions. For instance, the two endings. Uh, maybe we should get into that right now while the credits roll, well just a little bit. I don't expect to get any answers though, that would be silly. So we can either link the fire, which means we become a human torch and, well, we'll rekindle the first flame and possibly become a new win as I already pointed out. Then there is the Dark Lord ending, which just has us waltz out and become the Dark Lord, uh, the Lord of Man. At least that's what Kath makes us believe. Now on the subject of Kath and Framd, this is where it kind of gets interesting. Kath and Framd both congratulate us if we choose the Dark Lord ending. 
Now, Framd was the one who told her to link the fire in the first place, which is the exact opposite of what would happen in the Dark Lord ending. Because, yeah, in the Dark Lord ending, the flames will fade and only Dark remains. Now, what exactly could be Framd's motivation for that? And Kath's? Maybe... Kath and Framd just didn't really care. Maybe they were just kind of opportunists, they wouldn't have cared over the outcome. I mean, apparently the Dark Lord ending would be more favorable to them, because it gets rid of all the gods and gives them a Dark Lord. Maybe a puppet to play with, who knows, I'm not sure. The Link the Fire ending, on the other hand, it, well, technically would get rid of all the gods, because in our case at least, we also killed Gwendolyn, who orchestrated the entire Link the Fire thing and told Fram to tell us to go Link the Fire. Or rather, he used the illusion of his sister Gwynewir to tell us that. And while that doesn't really lead to an Age of Dark, it would certainly establish a status quo for the Serpents. Serpents are, in case you forgot, imperfect dragons. Oh, by the way, I, I don't know how that's significant. But, yeah, I could go on and on about this, but I don't really think I should. It just raises further questions and questions. And that's kind of the fun part. If the story of Dark Souls were told in a more conventional way, it would probably be pretty unimpressive. But the way it is done, it really works. Piecing it together is part of the fun. Dark Souls is both challenging in its gameplay and also in its story. Yes, indeed. The dark sign brands the undead. And in this land, the undead are corralled and led to the north. Where they are locked away to await the end of the world. Christ, now I talked all over the credits with just some stupid lore. I meant to give shoutouts to people and stuff. Uh, uh yeah, Freihel. Say goodbye. You earned yourself some rest. Now, though, it is in fact time for those shoutouts I've planned. What better place to give shoutout than the very beginning, the first episode of this LP, which a lot of you people probably won't have seen because I redid it twice. But the people who actually gave me some valuable feedback to improve the video were Darkane and Hesse from the Let's Play forum. You rock. Rock on. Um, even though you probably didn't even bother to watch this LP. Shame on you. Then of course, uh, there are Krimsh and Chenpei Hyde who accompanied me on the New Game Plus. It was the first time for me doing co-commentary, and while it started kinda slow, we really got into it. And I really enjoyed making those episodes, and I hope to be able to work with you another time, maybe, in the future. Oh, by the way, Trimsh, as of this recording, I'm still waiting on your audio for the remaining New Game Plus episodes. <coughs> another person I'd like to give some love is Matt Speroni. 
one of my first followers, as far as I'm aware. He even followed my first yeah, pseudo Dark Souls LP, which was kind of not completely terrible, but at the same time it was really terrible. But he sat through it and I appreciate it. Matt, by the way, is a comic book artist. He draws and writes that dreadful for nuclearpower.com. That's nuclear with a K. So go on ahead and check it out, it's good. Of course, I would also like to thank everyone who actually contributed in some way to the thread, even if it's just a small post or something like that. Some of you people will now be mentioned a second time, but yeah, you're just that awesome, it's alright. So yeah, there is Jumpy Hyde, Crimsh, Wrath Dragonatrix, Sai the Slayer, Darkane, and Altagonio. And that's it. Wow. I was hoping for a long list there, but apparently no one likes my LP. <laughs> oh, um, <laughs> nah, okay. So, um, of course, finally, I would like to thank everyone who watched, including you, of course. So, now that we've got that covered, the only thing for me left to say is, see ya.